Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, in my last video, I brought you all some breaking news on the new hair loss treatment pyrolutamide, and to be honest, Chooms, the news was pretty disappointing. The results of the pyrolutamide phase 3 trial were released, and while it wasn't as bad as some people are making it out to be, and I definitely haven't given up on pyrolutamide completely yet, it is undeniable that the results certainly weren't what we were hoping it would be. During the video, I made the observation that drugs like pyrolutamide that treat hair loss by blocking the androgen receptor directly haven't exactly lived up to their hype, especially when compared to 5-AR inhibiting drugs like finasteride and dutasteride. I gave some theories as to why that might be the case. I laid it all out in the video, which I'll link below in case you haven't seen it yet. But just in case it isn't clear what I'm talking about here, androgen receptor blocker drugs work completely differently from drugs that block the 5-AR enzyme in order to prevent the conversion of testosterone into the trash hormone DHT, like finasteride and dutasteride. Instead, drugs like pyrolutamide keep the DHT from interacting with the androgen receptor to begin with, as you can see in this figure right here. So... You may be wondering, why does it even matter? If both types of drugs reduce DHT, then they both should work, right? It shouldn't matter whether they lower DHT through blocking the androgen receptor or through stopping the conversion of testosterone into DHT. Well, it looks like that maybe it does matter. It's beginning to look like androgen receptor blocking drugs like RU5841, fluoridol, and now even pyrolutamide simply don't seem to be powerful enough to replace the already proven drugs that work by blocking the 5 error enzyme, specifically finasteride and dutasteride. I think the jury is still out on pyrolutamide, but certainly none of these drugs have shown that they have the potential for greater efficacy than the 5-AR blocking drugs. That seems really strange to me, because even though these topical anti-androgen drugs don't lower the DHT the same way finasteride does, they do block the effective DHT on the androgen receptors of the hair follicles, which is where DHT does all of its dirty work. So why is it exactly that drug manufacturers are having just so much trouble figuring out how to make a topical anti-androgen that is as effective as a 5-AR inhibitor? like finasteride. Why are 5 air inhibitors so much better than anti-androgens? Like I said, I do have some ideas about why that's the case, and I'm going to expand upon my theory probably in my next video, so stay tuned for more on that. But when I made the last video, I also brought up Brizula, which is the trade name for Clascoterone. You can kind of think of Brizula as the Tesla Cybertruck of hair loss treatments. Like the Cybertruck, it generated a tremendous amount of hype when it was first unveiled to the public, but that happened so many years ago that most people have stopped caring and moved onto other products even though the product is finally here. Indeed, like I mentioned in my last video, I have almost completely forgotten about Brizula. Last time I did a video about it, in fact, I think was over three years ago. The only reason I am even talking about it at all again is because people are so disappointed in pyrolutamide that they're desperate for anything at this point. And believe me, I feel you, chums. It's kind of like when you accidentally ruin your Thanksgiving dinner and then find out that the only restaurant in town that is still open is Arby's. So... I decided to check in on Brizula and see where we are with it currently. How close is it to becoming FDA approved and what do we know about how effective it is? Well, one reason it is hard to figure out what's going on with this drug is that it's like a Doppler from The Witcher, meaning it is constantly changing its identity. When it was originally developed, it went by the code name of CB0301, but then for a while it went by its chemical name which is Cortexalone 17 alpha propionate. However, now its official name is Clascoterone, but its trade name when it is used as a 1% topical cream for the treatment of acne is Winlevy. Winlevy was approved by the FDA for treating acne in 2020. Brizula, though, is the trade name for the much stronger topical preparation of Clascoterone that is still under investigation for the treatment of androgenic alopecia. Even the name of the drug company that is developing Brizula is pretty confusing. It is being developed by Cosmo Pharmaceuticals, which is based in Dublin, Ireland. However, for a while, the drug was being developed by Cassiopeia Pharmaceuticals, which was an Italian spin-off company, though Cosmo ended up buying back that company in 2021. So, let's try to straighten this all out, Jooms. What do we know about Clascoterone, and how does it compare to other androgen receptor blockers? Well, let's cover the basic research here first. One of the first studies on Clascoterone is this one from way back in 2004. I'll get into this research in a moment, but let me repeat. The research on this subject began way back in 2004. There's a good chance that there are people watching this video right now who are balding who weren't even born yet when this product's research was new. Just let that sink in for a moment. In the study, Clascoterone was applied topically and injected under the skin in hamsters and rats. 
So the anti-androgenic activity of clasgotarod was compared with other anti-androgenic drugs that were available at the time, like flutamide, cyproterone, and even finasteride, which of course works by lowering DHT, so it isn't strictly an anti-androgen like other treatments. It is a 5-AR inhibitor. Anyways, in this table here, clasgotarone, which is CB0301 in the table, was found to be about three times more potent than flutamide, two times more active than finasteride, and about as effective as cyproterone. Wow, that all sounds pretty strong. However, However, clasgotarone was a third less active against DHT versus testosterone, which isn't a particular good result when we consider that DHT is the hormone we are interested in blocking. However, one good result was that when clasgotarone was injected under the skin of rats, it didn't seem to have any anti-androgenic activity, so hopefully that means there are no systemic side effects that would occur in humans using it on their skin. The researchers attributed this to the fact that the drug is rapidly metabolized in the liver into inactive metabolites. However, the researchers did note that very high doses of the drug could possibly suppress adrenal function. This appears to be due to a metabolite of clasgotarone, which is called cortexalone. This is an interesting point that we'll come back to later, but for now, let's get to the conclusions of this particular research. So, the researchers concluded, quote, in conclusion, CB0301, meaning clasgotarone, is a potent anti-androgen with selective topical activity. Its biological profile should be considered ideal for an anti-androgen for topical use due to the absence of systemic activities as well as the lack of toxicity." Unquote. Well, of course, we have to take hamster and rat data with a grain of salt. So what happens when we look at clasgotarone when it's applied to human beings? Well, we do have a lot of human research data on clasgotarone at this point, but much of it is from the weaker version of clasgotarone known as Winlevy, which was developed to treat acne. We know that androgens, and especially the trash hormone DHT, play a role in causing acne, though acne is more complicated than just too much DHT in the skin. The factors that cause acne include the plugging of the pores by excessive keratin, as well as excessive sebum production, inflammation, and infection by a bacterium called QD bacterium acnes. However, DHT is definitely involved in the excess sebum production and inflammation, so a topical anti-androgen like clasgotarone can help with at least some of the causes of acne. Before you guys ask though, no, finasteride does not help with acne, although dutasteride theoretically might, and that is because the DHT that is responsible for sebaceous gland activity comes mostly from the type 1 enzyme, which finasteride only has a negative effect on. Dutasteride, on the other hand, does have a significant effect on the type 1 enzyme, so theoretically it might help, although this has never been clinically verified. So, the first phase 2 study was done in just 42 subjects with acne. The trial was primarily a safety study, and it found that there were detectable blood levels of clasgotarone using the 1% concentration of the drug topically. So the drug is absorbed, though the levels in the blood were very low. However, there were no systemic side effects, fortunately. Nevertheless, like in the rat study, 3 out of the 42 subjects did develop suppression of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, at least as measured by a test of serum cortisol levels, called a coitus centropin stimulation test, also known as an ACTH stimulation test. However, the test went back to normal after stopping the drug and the subjects had no symptoms. So I just wanted to bring up this possible side effect because it is listed in the product description of Winlevy. And because Brizula is a much stronger concentration of clasgotarone than Winlevy is, it may turn out to be a problem with this drug. So I don't want to get into too much detail on the phase 2 and phase 3 studies of Winlevy for acne since it isn't too relevant for hair loss. The studies involved several hundred patients, and it was found that Winlevy actually works pretty well for treating acne. Here is a timeline of the whole development phase of Winlevy. For acne, the drug is usually well tolerated with most of the side effects being just local skin reactions. So what about the trials for clasgotarone for the treatment of androgenic alopecia? Where do they stand as of today? Well. For androgenic alopecia, like I already mentioned, the concentration of clasgotarone is higher in brizula than the 1% concentration used for acne. A phase 2 study of brizula was completed in 2019, and the results were published as a press release from the drug company. The study enrolled 344 patients, and they were randomized to receive topical clasgotarone solution, either 2.5 or 5% twice daily, or 7.5% once or twice daily versus a placebo control. The study lasted for 12 months. 
So the good news is that all the doses of Brizola were more effective than placebo in causing hair growth, which already is a better result than the phase 3 study of pyrolutamide that was just reported. The greatest improvement was with the 7.5% twice daily dose with increased target hair counts of 14.3 compared to control. However, if you look at the result of patient self-evaluation, the results aren't that impressive compared to placebo. 61.8% of subjects reported improvement on the highest dose of Brizula versus 50% of subjects on placebo. Of course, hair counts are a much more objective measurement than patient self-assessment, so I wouldn't worry too much about what the self-assessment data says. In addition to this phase 2 study, there are two other phase 2 studies, including one using Brizula in women and one using it in men. In both trials, Brizula is being compared to topical minoxidil. I was able to find some results on the study in women using the drug. The study compared twice daily 2% minoxidil with 5% and 7.5% Brizula twice daily versus a placebo. It looks like 70 women were enrolled in this study, and the study was done in Germany. The results of the study showed that only women less than 30 years old who received 5% Brizula showed any significant improvements in hair counts. So again, these are pretty underwhelming results. Though to be fair, women probably aren't the best test subjects for anti-androgen treatments to begin with. Their hair loss is due to androgen alopecia, but it has been shown that they are more difficult to treat with drugs like finasteride, and they usually require a higher dose than one milligram per day. And I actually have a video about how women can treat their hair loss, which I'll link below. So I'm not all too sure what to make of the results of that study. Anyways, it looked like Brizula research was stalled for a while, but back in June of this year, 2023, all of a sudden, Cosmo Pharmaceuticals announced that they had started not one, but two phase three trials of Brizula. These are identical six month randomized controlled clinical trials using a dose of 75 milligrams twice a day of clascoterone, which would be equivalent to one milliliter of a 7.5% solution twice a day. After the six month double blinded trials, the studies will be continued for another six months with a single blind treatment with the Brazula solution at the same dose. The studies are rather appropriately called scalp 1 and scalp 2. The endpoints for the studies will be changes in target area hair counts and patient reported outcomes. There will be about 60 centers involved in the study with a recruitment of 1,500 men. The study will be performed in the USA, Georgia, Germany, and Poland. So if you live in any of those areas and want to try Brazula, then you probably can. Also. Even though I cannot officially endorse this on my channel without getting into trouble, I think it is also worth mentioning that clascoterone is widely available on gray market chemical research websites, and I know anecdotally some people have reported success while using it. So I'm glad this treatment is finally moving along. However, I'm not overwhelmed by the phase two trial results. I think it probably helps, although I don't think it will be as effective as finasteride. I'd also worry a little bit about the increased risk of side effects with a much higher dose of clascoterone than what's used for acne, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. I did a video comparing the different androgen receptor blockers a little while ago, and I'll link it below. I basically used the basic chemical data on the drugs, including what's called the IC50 and the KI constant, which are measurements that are done in test tubes. So this is a very theoretical comparison, and if you want to understand more about that, then I suggest watching the video. But in that comparison, I ended up ranking clascoterone as third place in androgen receptor blocking potency after pyrolutamide and RU5841. But again, that's all just theoretical data which was based on looking at these drugs in a test tube. It probably doesn't perfectly reflect how well these drugs behave in humans. We're talking about using different concentrations, different dosages of these different drugs, and it also doesn't reflect how well they absorb through the skin, which would affect how efficacious they are. But so far, these anti-androgen drugs have not outperformed finasteride and dutasteride, and like I said in my previous videos, I have some theories as to why that may be the case, but I'll explore that further in my next video. I don't think these drugs necessarily even need to outperform finasteride in order to be effective. I think if someone starts treatment soon enough, or if they don't have extremely aggressive androgenic alopecia to begin with, then I think it is possible that a topical anti-androgen might be an effective treatment for them. After all, many people microdose finasteride and still get good results, so I don't think a new hair loss treatment needs to be as good as one milligram of finasteride in order for it to be effective. In any case, I think a new androgen blocking drug will be a nice treatment to have, either as an adjunctive therapy to existing treatments, or as an alternative for people who can not tolerate 5-air inhibitors. So I am glad this treatment looks like it is going to be hitting the market, maybe even as soon as next year. That being said, I think there is a strong possibility that topical antiandrogens will never be superior to 5-air inhibitors, and that is what my next video will explore. So I'll be back to discuss that with you all soon. So until then, thank you for watching Hair Loss Witchers. God bless.